The idea of uh, temporalness is a very real and important one. We have to accept a kind of temporalness also within the uh, art area. Our experience is the most important part, not the material of, of permanentness. Kenji Akagawa is an artist who's been living here in the Twin Cities since the 1960s, and he's really one of the most imp important artists that we have here from Minnesota. An incredible sculptor, maker of public spaces, but also he's taught at the Minneapolis College of Art and Design for 40 years. This sculpture garden is one of the first piece I, I have made about 25 years ago. Late 80s, Martin Friedman, then uh, the uh, director of Walker, he said, uh, well, Kenji, you want to make some bench and then a meet a few group of people and the incredible, wonderful, world-famous artists coming in and uh, me, the tiniest one from local, local staff. <laughs> <laughs> and then just to make this, I thought, yeah, bench idea, it should be not just a physical rest, but the intellectually, emotionally, people are going to encounter incredible diverse work here. And then I thought, well, then I should have a local material. Angie's piece is really one of the most beloved pieces in the Minneapolis Sculpture Garden. Anytime you walk through the garden, you'll see someone lying down on it or resting on it. What's lovely about it, I think, is that it's, it integrates so beautifully into the natural landscape because it uses materials that are local. Uh, this is a field stone. Indeed, the farmers, uh, Minnesota farmers, uh, they hate the stones, right, in the field. So this is from Stillwater area, I, I, I got. And uh, this one uh, you may be very much familiar with, uh, Taylor's Falls, uh, that basalt, you know. And then uh, this granite is a polished one. So it's a three different kind of environment uh, coming from that. And then I, I'm, I was hoping <laughs> that uh, people will feel very, you know, at home of the piece uh, rather than a strange one. Seating, it's again a physical body sitting and then wood ages and then our uh, decay. I think again sense of life it gives, not permanent life, but uh, this is part of our dwelling and the bird pooped and the bird has been invited also to play around or sit around here. So. And she's always open that nature and, and humanity may overtake and that's okay. He, his generosity allows that to be a part of his practice. About 25 years ago, our office uh, got a call from the park board and said that we got a gift from our sister city, uh, Nagasaki, and uh, wondered if you could design a park around it. What the gift was, was one balustrade from ground zero, can you do a park? <laughs> so if it came from a bridge, uh, the initial thought it needed to have a bridge. And so after 25 years of weathering and uh, it had worn out, we got a call from the park board again and said, could you replace it? And uh, I said, uh, uh, are you interested in expanding the collaboration? And they said, sure. Mm -hmm. So uh, my friend and colleague forever is Kinji. <laughs> Collaboration is the most important part. And you brought another level of collaboration because you brought the students into it. That's right, yeah. Students came and then we laid the stones together. And then it's a wonderful assistance from MCAT students, as well as uh, volunteers of uh, this Peace Bridge group. Our community-based art, it's quite different from history-based art. It's to produce this one, the process, integrity in the process it has to have. It's not the end product of bridge, but the process of making the bridge makes community also. Okay, I remember that Heinrich had told us about the zigzag bridge, mm -hmm. which meant that evil spirits only travel in straight lines. Of course, I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. This bending, not only the kind of evil spirits cannot travel straight and then they'll, they'll drop off into the water, but the idea of this Yatsuhashi design is a kind of playfulness. 
uh, from one point to the other. I love the sight, and then within this uh, very quiet and wonderful, you know, uh, environment, uh, right in the city. I think a lot of people don't realize that this has now been declared an international peace site. Congratulations. We are at the Normandale Community College. The uh, site is in between Japanese garden, so-called, and the new building. I, I think there's no way I can merge the two aesthetics together. So uh, what I went through is the educational institution going through the kind of backdoor entry to a much more significant location activity. So activity here is to create a gathering space, first of all, so students can use any kind of outdoor classroom as such. Pergola is, again, I don't have the vegetable growing here or vines, but this is another 10 years, 20 years. Hopefully, vines will grow and then it will start to give a shade. As we looked at the various candidates that were considered, we felt that Kinji brought to the table an aesthetic and a sensitivity to the garden that made it possible for us to connect this building uh, and the garden. It's kind of an idea here. It's a, from pointing uh, this gradual up is uh, uh, when you come to the school, you are pretty much alone and the in between space, uh, there's a pillar. One coming in and then broadening one's own kind of idea of education and they enter to the school. When you get out, uh, it's to again become independent and then go, go into the society. So uh, this idea of a passage, becoming something, going, being something, I like the design that Kinji presented. It, it tends to, to reach out, but it also tends to pull you in. And I, I like that. I think that is a, a very welcoming piece. By giving this circle right in the center, and then even maybe they can do some dancing here too. So that's my idea. There you go. <laughs> Japanese dance. <laughs> yeah, Sky, thank you very much. There you go. <laughs> Minnesota Original is made possible by the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the Citizens of Minnesota. <laughs>